Hello, it's Andrea from Our Daydream. So I had a message today. It was concerning um, basically like loving yourself. I had a, a conversation, be it yesterday, but also I've been kind of learning this lesson from God lately. Uh, is this purifying of self. So this morning I was at church and Brian McGowan from Come As You Are Ministries, he actually um, brought up the book of Titus. And so I wanted to read a couple of scriptures out of it. So chapter two, verse five, and see how far we, we want to go with this. So to be discreet, chaste keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands at the word of God, be not blasphemed. Young men likewise exhort to be sober minded in all things, shewing thyself self a pattern of good works and doctrine, shewing uncorruptness, gravity, sincerity, sound speech that can cannot be condemned, that he that is of the contrary part may be ashamed, having no evil thing to say of you. Exhort servants to be obedient unto their own masters and to please them well in all things, not answering again. So I want to speak on this a second is um, this idea of, you know, doing good works and, and still getting condemned regardless. Um, still having people talk badly about you um, is understanding that you know if you're doing good works and people are talking against you they're gonna feel that on their souls so you don't have to so much um, hold that as a part of your heart because they're already good like they're already being punished for that uh, God will reveal himself through people that condemn you when you are doing good, God will show them and reveal onto their hearts the things that they were doing wrong. Exhort servants to be obedient unto their own masters and to please them well in all things, not answering again, not pure loining, but shewing all good fidelity that they may adorn the doctrine of God our Savior in all things. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation shall appear to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. So what about, you know, all the things that are happening in the world? What about, you know, worrying about voting? What about, you know, the wars? What about COVID? What about... Um, all this travesty that happens and people people are afraid and um, people are depressed and people you know are dealing with all these emotions which is darkness that's darkness and so a person should know a believer from a non-believer by how are they how are they walking through this um, dark terrain are they being a light in the world of darkness or are they you know feeding into the darkness and talking about it and letting it consume them looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ whom gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works um, what about those people that are unmovable, you know? What a, how, how, how are they unmovable in such uncertainty? And it's that hope and faith that, you know, God's working everything out for his good. Like, it's all glory to God. So it's like, and God doesn't have, you know, anything bad planned for those that believe by faith and have hope in the outcome um so you're peculiar you're not walking around you're not you know trying to make everybody's life harder you're not um condemning people for the things that they're doing wrong um you're speaking of truth and it's a truth that could only 
could only bring them salvation, you know? And so it's a boldness as well. It's like, I'm telling you this truth, but because it might be offensive, you know, if I didn't have love in my heart, but because I have love in my heart, I can speak this truth to you that might have, you know, offended you in any other way, shape, or form, but because it's coming from love, from love of the outcome of the, you know, the paradigm shift in your life to to give you a grander outcome in the end. Um, so, you know, that's peculiar. You, you really aren't fitting in with the crowd anymore. Now, you know, you're kind of walking differently. So, but that's, a, but that's the thing too. It's like, if I don't have this huge community of people, I'm, I'm not being distracted. Like I have, I have to lean on God because, you know, you feel so peculiar, peculiar in a, in a, in a world that has so much darkness. Put them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers, to obey magistrates, to be ready to every good work, to speak evil of no man and of no brawlers, but gentle, shewing only meekness unto all men. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving divers' lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful, and hating one another. But after that, the, the kindness and love of God our Savior towards men appeared, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to His mercy, He saved us by washing the regen washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which He shed on us abundantly through, our, through Jesus Christ our Savior, that being justified by His grace, He should be made heirs, according to the hope of eternal life this is a faithful saying that these things i will that thou have affirmed constantly that they which have believed in god might be careful to maintain good works these things are good and profitable unto men but avoid foolish questions and genealogies and contemptions and striving about the law for they are unprofitable and vain. I think about questioning my circumstances. Um, you know, I, I wrote out a post a while ago. It, it said, you know, I don't understand and that's okay. It's not for me to understand. Our God is infinite. He doesn't abide by time. Like we go by the clock. We gotta be here by a certain time. We gotta be there by a certain time. We only have a certain amount of time to, to meet this deadline. And um, we're always on the move, but this is an infinite journey that we have with God. Like he is the beginning and the end and he's forevermore. He's eternity. He's, you know, the stars and the sky and the sun and the moon and, you know, all the galaxies combined. So. And we try to stick things in a box, right? We try to stick things in time. And we try to figure that out. Like, how are we going to do this in this amount of time? Or, you know, what is this meaning that this happened at this time? Or even examining it, examining it at all. Like, I was on the beach just about a year ago. And I was watching the sun come up. And just looking at the beauty of it on the beach and and I thought if God can make all this how can I even question it's like I I don't even if God explained it to me I still won't comprehend the majesty of it all and so um it's that questioning and wondering and trying to you know decode the situation um to make it right a man that is an heretic after the first and the second abomination which reject, knowing that he that is such is subverted and sinneth, being condemned of himself. We feel it. We feel these things that we do wrong. Um, I think it's the most difficult thing is actually forgiving yourself for knowing better and still doing it anyway. Um, but Satan wants to get in there. He wants to get into your mind. He wants to 
steal, kill, and devour. He wants to sidetrack you from the purpose that God has on your life. He wants you to die, to have a death of self. He wants you to live this earth in death. I had a huge problem with uh, self-love, um, loving myself. And I, I tried to seek for all these answers, like how how can I love myself? Um, how, how, how do you do that? Like, how do you grab a hold of something that you never knew? Um, and so little by little, precept by precept, God was opening up these doors. And the fact is, is that if we are having a hard time receiving love or connecting with people, um, that's a sure, sure explanation of not loving yourself. Um, so also, if you take that the other way, um, to understand anger and rage towards people, and, the, and, and if there's people that have that, um, we can understand then that that is lack of self-love. Um, that's lack of self-love. So I was talking to a client yesterday and I was talking to them about, they were speaking to me about how that they have, they find it hard to connect with people, um, to connect with people. And so I knew instantly that that was a lack of self-love and in order for me to relate to them what I had learned is celebrating yourself. I was talking to somebody about a month ago and you know, are you the type of person that always does good but doesn't care if anybody celebrates it? Um, are you the type of person that you know, will continue to do good even though it's not celebrated? Um, you might want to check into the fact, are you celebrating yourself? Uh, I think it is that where we miss the mark on self-love is really recognizing um, what it is that we actually do for other human beings on this planet. Um, really feeling and seeing the impacts that we make in people's lives on a regular basis and receiving that fully and genuinely and authentically and and it's interesting that I bring up that word authentically because if we're not actually walking this walk authentically um, we really don't get to know who it is that we are to even you know connect with yourself enough to give that love away um I know I mean you're pretty much avoiding yourself in that case so it's authentically walking this earth and trying to do these good deeds that you know the book of Titus speaks about and but not just to keep going not just to keep going and just doing good. Uh, it's going to tire your, you out. Like you're going to get tired. You're going to get exhausted. Um, it's going to drain your energy. You have to be able to recognize the return back. You have to be able to receive that. Uh, there's a lot of great men of God that, you know, all glory goes to God. But, but to understand though that God wants you to be elevated. Um, so that you could spread his light among all men. It's not like God wants to make you a king, which means you need to be recognized. You need to be known as being able to do these things. But it's your belief system that shines through all that. And, you know, talking about God and um, working for the kingdom and things like that. But at the same time, like, we have to celebrate these victories with inside of us. Like, we have to recognize, you know, that we do have a choice. I had a choice to be an atheist. 
Um, I had a choice to become a believer again. Um, I did have this choice. I didn't have to be an atheist and I didn't have to be a believer, but I had this choice to make. And, you know, I should celebrate the fact that I've come so far. I've made it from this person to that person and I've changed, changed so much. Uh, but I was asking God a couple weeks ago, I was like, how... How do I fix, um, what do you, what do you, what do you want to reveal to me to fix my circumstance? And so I'd actually talked about in the live that I had last time was that, you know, I come up with these 14 questions for God and God said, like, I can't answer any of those questions. I can't because until you actually drop your cross when you drop your cross all those questions are going to change so there's no point in me even answering them and God's kind of harsh like that with me but um so I had to figure out okay God now like what is this cross that I'm carrying and so little by little God was showing me that it was my self-talk um I had a friend come in town from out of town and he was talking to me um but he was watching like how I spoke about myself and my life and you know who I was and he had to say it once and I kind of looked at him like why are you so hard on yourself and then he said it again why what so please stop being so hard on yourself I had a podcast which I'm gonna actually um send out here in a couple weeks with Brent and he had spoke about that he said whenever I was a kid you know brothers they pick on their siblings it's just the way it is and I don't hold that against my brothers but they picked on me non-stop and so whenever they left I started doing that to myself and then it just kept progressing and progressing and progressing. But you see, if we don't have this awareness of these things that we actually do to ourselves, because we are automatically programmed that from so many years of doing it, and it come from the outside in to our lives, and it corrupted that purity inside of us. Um, sometimes it takes somebody from the outside looking at us to, to show us. But... I think it was helpful to have it done in the moment. Like, I've had people tell me this before, but they didn't actually see how I lived my life. And so, um, my friend, he actually seen me in action doing this to myself. And so, like, that was my cross. It was the way that I was seeing myself, you know, in my situations and in my circumstances. So, this, this concept of self-love is realizing really your divinity um, and how you're impacting others with this divinity that you know it, it was made so beautifully um, and that's there's there's no such thing as like a light switch so like if only we could be robots and like flip this switch and say hey I'm, a, I'm changing all these aspects of myself that you know I continually hurt myself but but the thing is, is like asking God for these questions, like, God, like reveal this to me, show this to me, show me what I can do to change, show me what I can do. Um, and as soon as you come up with a question, God's going to reveal it to you in an answer. But the thing is, and I, I, I kind of wrote it in my notes today is at church is that people will go to church for a message instead of the spiritual experience, you know, with the thought in mind of what is God trying to do in this service. And it's the same as whenever we walk. People will see um, situations that arise instead of, you know, the God in the situations that arise and what God's trying to do in this situation. Um, and so a lot of people miss, miss these awesome, um, answers because they're not paying attention. Um, they're looking at things like, you know, a stick. 
I would see this stick and I would think, yeah, that's a stick that was in a mud. It's getting my fingers all dirty, you know, and like that's the human perspective. Um, but the spiritual perspective is, I wonder how old this stick really is, you know? And I wonder if God placed that there just to be in this message. Like, and I wonder how many lives this stick is going to change. And I wonder what tree this stick come from. Um, but it's really being open to like your journey and just being like, God, like, what are you doing in it? Like, what are you trying to tell me in this conversation with this person right now? Because a lot of times we can't hear because uh, our minds are so jumbled up. I talk to people all the time about meditating to slow their mind down. And they're like, I can't meditate. My mind don't stop working for me to meditate. I can't meditate. I'm like, your mind won't stop working for you to meditate because you've never meditated before. Um, it's like working out. You don't get muscles the first day. It takes active participation in exercising and building your muscles for you to get these muscles so and it's the same thing with meditation as well and but that's the same thing with um with our walk with god it's like it's like if our mind is so jumbled up with all this gunk and garbage from the world we can't hear him like God isn't Jesus said put on a white gown in order like we can't put a white gown on you being dirty like you have to be clean in order for us to put on a white gown because of course if your skin's dirty you put on a white gown the white gown's not going to be white anymore now it's going to be dirty it's going to be filthy so God can't seep into something that's not in a pure nature so you know if he can't talk to you in your mind he'll go through people human beings situations you know maybe a bird maybe a sunset whatever it is it could be a fluffy cloud in the sky like god will speak through so many things if you're just attuned with this spiritual experience like what is God doing in all of this? And if you stay attuned to this, it'll blow your mind because you start writing down these questions like, God, what do you want to show me in this? God, what can I do to change this? Like, and you come up with these questions, God will come to you with the, with the right answers. So I was in church today and you know I journal every time I go into church and I also come up with this it's like all this self-talk that I've been having with myself that's kind of you know it's the enemy like the enemy seeps in through bad situations so I had a pretty traumatic um, awareness last November and it really messed me up right um, I had, it had t taken me like two months to actually, you know, completely look at it. And then, you know, it took me months after to start becoming okay with who I was again um, after hearing this. Because it, it was one of those, you know, earthquakes. Um, and so, it sees happenings that happen to us where you know Satan can seep in there and start manipulating your mind and thoughts and so that was the first situation so all this negativity inside of me it starts attracting all this bad happenings to me and so I'm not ignorant to the spiritual journey I know that everything that comes against me is for me and so I'm just like well what's in there and how can I get it out to you know actually look at this so next thing you know you know all these bad things keep happening I keep trying to drop it and then I pick up something else and then I drop it and I pick up something else I'm like what is happening like why does this keep happening to me um and it's like the more it happened the worse my self-talk get got the more you know I started wondering like God is this what you want for me like do you want me to be in pain I I just don't understand and so I go through moments of this and 
you know, God will reveal things to me and then I'll move on and something else bad will happen to me. And, you know, and then I was in church today and I realized that the enemy seeped in so much through this situation that it, it, it took me completely off the mission. So I'm sitting here thinking like, God forgive me and um, all these different ways, shapes and forms. And it was like, God revealed it to me. He's like, are you so busy now worried about your own situation that you almost forgot, that you forgot about others? And you know, what's happening in other people's lives? Like now, are you so busy honed in on your own problems and how you're gonna fix that, that you forgot about everybody else that's going through problems? See, we're not here for to we're not here for to gain all it is that we can get while we're on this planet we're here for service work like if you are a born again christian you are here to fulfill god's will on this earth so don't let these happenings that are happening to you you know allow the enemy to seep in and deceive you and and you know, close your eyes to the, to the purpose, right? And so, like, my purpose is helping others, but I couldn't understand why I was so disconnected with, you know, moving forward on my purpose and the plans that I have that I want to accomplish in my life, that why I couldn't find that passion and pursuit for that anymore. And I'm just like, why, why can't I get excited about this anymore? And, and the fact was, is that I was so busy focused on problems that I was forgetting the purpose altogether. I, I completely was blindsided um, by the purpose in general. And so if you're off that narrow path that God has you on, if you're off that narrow path and the enemy seeps in, it's going to condemn you, right? It's going to condemn your life. It's going to condemn your situations. It's going to try to cover up every blessing that you have. It's going to try to cover up everything good that's inside of you, all this divinity that you have, this connection with God. It's going to try to get you to have amnesia, to forget that you even have that connection with God and it's going to have you start questioning, like, God, like, where are you? Why are you not fixing this situation? Why are you not helping me right now? God, like, I don't understand where you are. When in reality, God's right there. It's just Satan covered all this stuff up with a black blanket, right? And covered it all up because you let one thing seep in there. And that's human. Like, Jesus dealt with this too. Don't get it twisted. Jesus dealt with this too. Um, when he knew he was going to die the way that he died, he wanted to He wanted to pass this cup. Um, and so, and he dealt with it too. But the difference between Jesus and us is, is that he didn't get amnesia. He snapped out of it instantly. He seen where he was with God in that moment. He seen what was against him and he snapped back out of it and so and that's why they say that jesus is so perfect is that um he noticed these things right away he didn't allow it so here it is november i'm back again i allowed it to become a whole year so and for anybody that like keeps up with me or has followed me for any length of time um i've been fairly consistent uh in my message and i've been doing this since the beginning of 2019 uh and so i'm very spiritually conscious to what it is that my mission is here on earth and so even the most anointed human beings on this planet are going to deal with this because we are human beings we have the flesh now so here it is that the bible says you know through your weakness you are being perfected see at the beginning of my journey in 2018 2017 
I got ruffled up more, right? And the more the time progresses, the more I'm learning these lessons. So be it that it took a whole year for me to figure these out. Now think to it the next time that something shakes my atmosphere, I'm going to be more mindful of like, these are the things that I neglected and didn't understand. This is how bad it got within a full year. Um, And so... It's that strengthening. Uh, I just sent out kind of like a commercial with uh, Matt Sassano for our upcoming um, podcast on Monday. And he had said that like, you you know, you got to go all in because this is a spiritual warfare. And it takes it like you have to take it seriously because it's a battle that you're in. And it's so true. Uh, You seem to walk just focused on the wrong things. (laughs) The the wrong things. Um, And so, it's no wonder that the world, you know, is as depressed. And, you know, most of society is taking some sort of medication in order to soothe their um, ailments and things like that. Because... You know, everybody's taking things so personally whenever there's something much grander taking place. A lot of people don't even know their identity. Um, It's a really scary thing whenever you completely surrender and say, all right, like, I'm not dictating this walk anymore. I'm not going to be in control of this walk anymore. And everything that I believe to be true is all you know, not suiting my journey anymore and you completely surrender, that's terrifying. It's terrifying to be led by something that you don't even completely comprehend in reality, in the physical form. But whenever you do that, you you learn so much about yourself that you really, like, start learning your identity, like, who you really are on this earth. And so... But once you do that, you're no longer Satan's friend anymore. Now you're the enemy. And so Satan's going to take you out whenever he can. And and as soon as he seeps into your mind and into your body and into your soul, that's whenever things start getting shaken on the outside. Um, If I'm feeling my best, these things aren't going to happen. You know, they're, they're just not. And so... It's just that any any type of healing that needs to take place or pain or suffering on the inside that needs to take place or self-talk or um, the way that you treat other people, if it's defiled in any shape, way, shape, or form, um, if, if you're walking this earth and you're just doing whatever you want, um, you're going to find it to be a more difficult journey. And so... But yeah, in order to like truly love yourself, you really have to identify with what am I doing good in this world? Um, You know, what impacts am I making in this world and how people actually view you and really um, embrace that truly and fully and, you know, start seeing this goodness in you and start celebrating your victories Uh, you know, God wants that for you. God wants to transform every part of your life, every aspect of your being. Like, God wants to transform uh, the way that you act, the way that you talk. God wants to transform the way that you look. Um, I can tell you from, like, the beginning of my journey up until now, like, I didn't even care what I looked like. Uh, I wore bedhead all the time. If you look back in my old lives... Like, I really wasn't dressing up and really didn't care to. Um, now I want to be presentable. I want to be seen. I want to I wanna walk the walk in the kingdom of God. And so, but there's still these different things that, you know, you're going to learn along the way. Things are going to happen and they're going to shake you. And God's got to strengthen you in that and show you this wisdom in it. But don't forget, don't allow Satan to get in there so much so that he condemns you enough that you start missing your blessings you start missing 
the mark. Like you stop seeing what God's doing in your life and you stop listening. And you know, it's like if you're condemning other people, you're just as hard on yourself. And and I really think that, you know, the antidote to brotherly love is really teaching people how to love themselves through all that they've been through throughout their whole life. You see there's a lot of people out there no, I'm gonna I'm gonna reiterate that. So there's a lot of people out there, or I'm gonna rephrase that. There's a lot of people out there, or might I say, everybody out there on the planet that has this long storyline of stuff that they went through, that they actually at- attach to their identity and who they are, and allowed that to program their lives. And so, um. To really learn that self-love um, is important. It's no wonder that, you know, people aren't loving to one another. If you can't love yourself, you can't love others properly. And you can't connect with others properly. And, you know, and and it all starts with that. It's like the Bible verse goes, um, love your brother as yourself. Well, if you... <laughs> If you don't love yourself very much, you're not going to love your brother very much either. And so it's no wonder we're in a society, you know, where it's rare for people to be kind uh, to others. And so it's really understanding, like, how do I find that self-love? Well, my journey isn't who I am. Uh, Who I am is a divine being. Um, Who I am is... A gift to the kingdom that God had placed here perfectly with a purpose and so it's really understanding that and with people so far from the spiritual aspects of life there's a fish jump <laughs> um, if people are so like far off from like these spiritual aspects of life well of course <laughs> they're they're not gonna see themselves as divinity uh we gotta rid ourselves of this condemnation of the devil and if you look around and you see how people are treating people and you see how people are acting and reacting it's pretty apparent that satan's definitely winning the battle on this earth right now um satan's definitely taken over the majority so um and that seeps all the way into most of the people in the church house because people hadn't identified with the fact that you're not to be of the world which means the world didn't design you the world didn't teach you allow god to teach you die of that person that was trained up by the world that the world taught them how to be that the world taught them 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 protection mechanisms that you know the world did all this rid yourself from that and say god i want to be trained up brand new and i'm giving my life to you right now today i want you to take it i want you to clean it i want you to do your will every time i make a choice or decision it always ends up in having me in pain and sorrow and hurt and lord i'm done i'm done i give up the fight god take over take it let your will be done and not my will and then stop taking offense to your world because any bit of offense is that ego inside of you that says i remember whenever this happened and so surely that's happening again um offense is only gonna kill your pure nature um offense is not involved in purity uh it's not And we're never going to learn any better if we're always on, you know, always taking offense to the things that God's teaching us. God's in everything. So walk this life, wake up in the morning and be ready for this spiritual experience that God has you on. And pay attention. If somebody hurts your feelings, God, what are you doing in that? If somebody makes you happy, God, what are you doing in that? You know, if you give somebody a smile, thank you, God, for making me this beautiful human being, this divine human that could do this for somebody else, you know, and really making God like the highlight of these things that are happening in your life. And this is the only way. If you're tucking yourself in your house and you're not communicating with other people and you're not seeing these things that you're doing, Like, God told me once, he's like, how am I supposed to teach you if you don't leave your house? Like, 
And I'm like, but God, like I'm reading the Bible. I'm trying to learn all this. He's like, I can't teach you with that. Like I need you to move, be in movement so that I can show you in your walk these things that I need you to know for this journey that I have you on. And so God's, God's reaching out to you and he's telling you the same thing. You have to go out and experience people and places and things in the world. And you have to embrace these things that God's trying to tell you in it, even if they hurt. Even if they hurt. If they hurt, say, God, what are you what are you trying to show me in this? Reveal it to my heart, these things that you want me to know in all this, God. Um, and really make God the center of it all. And that's where you can lose this depression and this anxiety, this condemnation and this oppression. Um, God doesn't want that for you. 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 Satan got into my mind this morning, and he's like, and and my head went, maybe God just wants wants all these bad things to happen to me to hurt me, you know? And I'm like, no, 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 that's not of God. That's not of God. God wants beautiful things for your life. God wants you to be free from captivity. God wants for you to see what he put placed inside of you. And if you're not seeing what he placed inside of you, then you're not seeing him. You're blocking it. You're not seeing him. What if, what if I had making a sculpture of you and I had given it to you and you had said, that's not me. You know, that would hurt my heart, right? So, I mean, I'm blocking it. I'm blocking it. If I if I'm not seeing what God put in me, what it what God placed inside of me, who I am in God, I'm blocking every blessing that He's trying to give me. I'm blocking Him from talking to me. I'm blocking it all. And so, uh, if we're blocked from God, we're cutting off love. We're not then giving love away. We're not receiving love. And it's just a cycle that Satan wants you on. So, so don't allow him to take your position on this earth, you know. Satan wanted heaven. God gave him the earth, you know. So it's understanding that. Like Satan wants your mind. You, you, you can, uh, you can get rid of him. You can kick him out of, you know, your holy ground and your holy territory. You can tell him that, you know, you're not following that doctrine. You're following God. So I'm going to, I'm going to pray this out today. Father God, I ask that you reveal on the, on the week to come you know, what purpose that you have for our lives, Father, for anyone that hears this message and hears this prayer, reveal to them their purpose, reveal to them the things that they need to know in order to draw closer to you, Father. Allow, allow these things that are inside of them that are, you know, derailing their walk with you, allow them to be lit up so that you they might actually become aware of these things that's hindering their walk with you. Father, continue to teach us and grow us in the way. Continue to pull us closer to you, Father. Father, we love you and we praise you for everything you've done, everything you continue to do, and everything that you will do in our lives. We know that this is all for your glory, Father, that everything we walked through was, was to help and aid your children and so father we're grateful for this service this service work and this mission and this purpose that you placed on our lives that our lives won't be in vain father but we will be remembered as you know great and faithful servants of you that only gave out love and goodness to everyone that we contacted Lord, we thank you for uh, making us wise to, to these things that we do to ourselves, but also wise to the, to the vanity that happens all around us every day, that we, we wouldn't be shaken, Father, but we would, we would trust in 
your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven so father we trust in everything that you're doing today we trust that anybody that comes against us will not prosper but they will feel that they will feel that hurt on their heart and they will look to you and they will be saved in the name of jesus so so we thank you we thank you for continuing to teach us and show us how to be better to our brothers and sisters and not only be better to them father but how to bring them to you so father we ask that you watch over our week to come and you reveal to our hearts everything that you need for us to know on our on on our journey we love you and we praise you thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven in jesus mighty name we pray amen so uh i will see you guys next time uh i love you god bless have an awesome week and yeah bye